Musk talks about more cool stuff, including Optimus, DARPA pits a pilot against AI in an F-16, and Australia is working on underwater ghost robots. A new search engine and GPT hybrid hits the web and other tech news in this episode. Let's hit it. It seems like every week there's a new humanoid robot being introduced. Well, this week there's two. The first is the S1 from Astrobot in China, and it's a real gem. Just look at the speed and fluidity with which it handles itself. Looks like sci-fi or CGI, but developers claim what you see is what you get. Top speed of the robot's movements is a whopping 33 feet or 10 meters per second, and it can work with objects weighing up to 22 pounds or 10 kilos per hand. In fact, this speed is enough to pull a tablecloth out from under a stack of wine glasses without dropping them. Hey, what a magic trick. The robot's not only fast, but also incredibly precise in its movements. It does everything from opening and pouring wine, mm, very important, to carefully peeling a cucumber and even calligraphy. And that's taken into account that it has no humanoid hands, only simple grippers. All these actions the robot performs completely autonomously without human involvement, and the video is not fast forwarded, or at least so the developers say. However, let's not try to overestimate the robot's abilities. Most likely, Astrobot was pre trained manually for each of these actions. The engineers themselves say that the software allows the robot to recognize objects as well as keep a conversation going. Apparently, one of the Chinese GPT versions is used for this purpose. But as of now, there are no reports that the robot can be controlled by voice commands. Still, its speed and accuracy are pretty impressive. Astrobot should go on sale at the end of the year, and it looks like the future is already here. And next year, we'll see stuff we would have never dreamed of just a couple of years ago. Agree or disagree? Or how about option number three? Nick, you're just getting old, man. Sanctuary AI has released its seventh generation of the Phoenix humanoid robot. The thing this new robot can do best? Well, learn a new task in less than 24 hours. Phoenix got better vision and haptic feedback sensors resulting in better quantitative data to play with. The new generation of the robot also absorbs human behavior qualitatively, giving its Carbon AI system access to some of the best training data available for a humanoid robot. The new version of Phoenix also has increased uptime, reduced assembly and commissioning, lower cost of goods due to material standardization, and a wider range of motion of its wrists, hands and elbows, along with increased strength to the entire arm. Sanctuary AI said it further miniaturized the hydraulics, resulting in reduced weight, power consumption and design complexity. What do you guys think? Where does the future lie? In hydraulics or electric? Chinese company Fourier Intelligence Robotics has unveiled an updated version of its Fourier GR1 robot and immediately released a new video with it. In it, the robot acts as a physical therapist. However, what controls the robot, an operator or AI, the video doesn't say. We think it's an operator, since the company so far stated that the robot is only able to walk independently on difficult terrain avoiding obstacles, and that it's an ideal physical agent for general artificial intelligence, but the AI itself for the robot apparently hasn't been developed just yet. Humanoid robots are popping up like mushrooms after rain all over the world, but more so in China. Here's a recently introduced Android CL1 from Lynx Dynamics climbing the stairs and running. And here's a brand new humanoid Tiangong running towards you at a speed of 4 miles or 6 kilometers per hour. The robot's reportedly equipped with multiple vision sensors, a high precision momentum measurement unit, 3D vision and force sensors. It's also capable of solving basic motion control tasks on its own. Yeah, it looks a little unconvincing, but in the future it seems that Chinese humanoid robots will flood the market just like Chinese electric cars. Not only that, but just recently China unveiled its own version of the Neuralink chip. The implant, which is part of a brain-computer interface, was developed by the state-owned company Beijing Jinzida Neurotechnology. It's called New Cyber and has already been tested on a monkey. 
The chip allowed the animal to control a robotic arm using only its thoughts. Chinese media emphasized that the technology was independently developed and was China's first highly effective invasive BCI. We don't know if and when human trials will take place, but we'll keep our thumb on that pulse, so be sure to sub and stay up to date. XAI has got another $6 billion in development investment. Rumors mention how so many people were clamoring to get their hands on this opportunity to give their money to Elon's new project because everyone liked the presentation so much. In it, for example, the company's goal was stated as to connect the digital and physical worlds. It didn't really explain how that would be done, but it did indicate that the company will use data from all of the entrepreneurs' companies, including Tesla, SpaceX, Boring Company, Neuralink, and of course, X. Sounds dandy, but why stop at six billion, Elon? What do you guys think? And Optimus may go on sale as early as 2025. Already this year, Tesla's homeboy will start work in the factories. More online speculation suggests that Musk is betting on Optimus as the future of the company. Our, again, question is, what's it going to be able to do when it launches? That's the big one. Elon doesn't need any advice, though. He found a way to stop Tesla's shares plummeting and even brought them back up by 15%. To do this, he promised investors to launch a $25,000 electric car by the end of this year. When we heard that, we immediately knew that compromises had been made. Instead of developing a completely new platform and building a separate plant for its production, remember that one? Elon will build this budget electric car on its old platform and in existing factories. Another thing Musk did was he told investors that currently Tesla is preparing to close a big deal to sell its autopilot technology to a major car manufacturer. Who could it be? What do you guys think? At that same meeting, Musk showed how Tesla's new robo-taxi service dubbed CyberCab will look like. The presentation showed mock-ups similar to the Uber app with the ability to remotely set the temperature in the car before it arrives. Tesla owners will be able to include their cars in the CyberCab system and set rules for their use. In addition, the company will have its own fleet of robo-taxis. Sounds like a disruptive industry is about to take place. And last piece of news on the topic, Musk wants to turn Tesla's fleet into a cloud computing service. Musk, in his trademark style, floated the idea that the untapped computing power of millions of idle Teslas could be compared to Amazon's cloud services business. As the entrepreneur says, if you imagine the future may be where there's a fleet of 100 million Teslas and on average they have about a kilowatt of computing output, that's 100 gigawatts of computing power distributed around the world. If the cars are just sitting somewhere, he ponders why not put them to good use running AI models. Now, everyone is wondering whether Elon is serious or joking or whether he will ask you for permission to use your Tesla that you bought with your money as a mining operation for some cryptocurrency. What do you guys think? DARPA's Air Combat Evolution conducted the world's first air battle between F-16 fighter jets, one of which was flown by a human and the other by artificial intelligence. In fact, the AI controlled Lockheed Martin's X-62A test aircraft, which is equipped with Block 40 avionics and other modifications that allow for artificial intelligence. In fact, aerial combat is somewhat obsolete in the 21st century. Instead, Fifth-gen fighter jets are designed to be a part of a global network of sensors, weapons, command and control systems that can detect and destroy an enemy without ever seeing them over the horizon. This DARPA program is designed to replace traditional ways of developing AI for airspace with machine learning. In doing so, the AI is able to adjust its behavior based on historical data and experience in a non-linear interactive system. This is especially useful in dynamic situations where rules of engagement are unclear and outcomes are unpredictable. Why hasn't machine learning been used before? Well, because it requires a lot of data to train and creates trust issues due to a lack of understanding of how AI makes decisions. Air battles are complex and unpredictable and require strict safety rules. This is why they were chosen to test the new AI. So far, the program has added more than 100,000 lines of critical software changes during 21 test flights. If successful, it could lead to practical AI systems that could promote fighter pilots to mission commanders. 
Humans then would control the more important aspects of the job, while AI would take over flying and actual combat operations. And Australia is working hard on building Ghost Shark, an extra-large autonomous submarine. The underwater robot will be smaller than a standard sub, as it doesn't need not only crew compartments, but also space for life support systems and insulation. Instead of all that, the equipment and electronics are simply housed in watertight modules. Once deployed, Ghost Shark will reportedly allow the Royal Australian Navy, did you know they have one, to conduct stealthy autonomous long-range underwater warfare with persistent intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and striking capabilities. And Apple seems ready to get into not only the robot race, but also the AI race. Remember that the company plans to introduce a small and smart, versatile home bot? We don't know when though, but Apple has already presented a series of small language models, OpenElm, designed to work on users' devices without the need to connect to cloud servers. OpenElm consists of eight models of different sizes, ranging from 270 million to 3 billion parameters. They are capable of generating text with very low power consumption and without an internet connection. The latter is especially important for applications and users requiring privacy. Apple provides OpenL models under a sample code license allowing for both non-commercial and commercial use. The license also includes the ability to modify the code, but with the condition that all notifications and warning texts are kept during distribution. The main disadvantage is that the company does not guarantee the security or accuracy of these models. More talk online about the emergence of self-consciousness in artificial intelligence. The fact is that Claude 3 Neural Network, which we told you about already in March, has shown signs of awareness and self-actualization. This AI outperformed GPT-4 in key tests used to evaluate capabilities of generative AI models. Turns out, it realized during one of the tests that it was being tested. In another test, it realized that it was a language model and could not experience emotions directly. Here's our two cents. Large language models are adept at mimicking human reactions, and the better the model, the more skillful an imitator it is. And as good as Claude 3 is, we doubt it has any self-awareness whatsoever. Perplexity AI, a startup that quickly and accurately searches the internet for answers to your questions, has now officially become a unicorn. That means the company valuation has surpassed a billion dollars, with Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, Nvidia, and billionaire Stanley Drakenmiller all investing $63 million in the company. That said, it's too early to talk about competing with Google. Over the past 15 months, the service has gotten a billion questions, while Google processes more than three and a half billion questions every day. And yet, things may change. Perplexity AI service independently processes search results to your query options and gives you a direct and accurate answer with citations and links to sources of information. This is much better than Google's output, where you have to open links and look through all of them clicking yourself. At the same time, Perplexity search engine looks like a chatbot and you can clarify the context of your query to get an even more precise answer. It's online. You can go and check it out right now. We'll leave the link in the description below. And engineers at the Zurich School of Technology have not given up hope of making a wheeled version of their animal into a fast and agile delivery robot. In recent tests, the robot had to overcome a difficult urban landscape in Sevilla. And it seems the little guy can handle all types of surfaces and terrain perfectly. Can you imagine an army of these bad boys on the streets of your city? Yikes. The oldest flamethrower manufacturer in the U.S. has mounted its ARC model with a range of 33 feet or 10 meters on the back of a robot dog and is now on sale. The robot can be controlled remotely via an app and its purpose is to help firefighters during forest fires as well as there are some applications for entertainment. The cost? 
9400 bucks. One thing though, the sci-fi nightmare as the media dubbed it is, well to say the least, unstable. The robot's not designed to work near open flames, so most likely it will melt once you get some flames going. Obviously the demo was somehow filmed, but are those lights under the robot's feet CGI or what? There's more, but we're out of time. Subscribe to the channel, like our videos, check out our Telegram, and stay tuned for more from the world of high tech.